Here we're going to work on drawing an Apple iPod like I discussed earlier, but I'm going to draw an isometric view instead this time. Isometric view is often used when we want to show something in 3D on the 2D paper. So first we establish our 90 degree angle, and since I'm drawing an iPod, I know that it's longer or taller than it is wide, so I'm going to start off to the side a little bit and establish my vertical center for the iPod not in the center of my graph paper. Isometric paper or isometric drawings are usually at 30 degrees. You can actually get real isometric paper at graphpaper.com or you can use a 30-60 triangle to draw your 30 degree lines or on quarter inch by quarter inch paper it's approximately three squares up and five squares over will equal about 30 degrees. Instead of using a regular ruler this time, I'm going to use a scale, but I'm going to use the tens part of the scale, which is in regular inches, except instead of having sixteenth marks, it has point one marks, since my dimensions happen to be in decimals. My width is 2.4. My height is 4.1, and my width is a little bit above 0.4. So now I can draw more vertical line references. Now you can denote your other measurements on your side views. I'm starting with a bounding box that I will then darken in or erase where I need to. And I now have the outline for my iPod. Now I can go ahead and start darkening in and adding curves. If need be, it's helpful to have a ellipse template for drawing circles in isometric view. Circles in isometric view look like ellipses. Or if you're trying to do curves, remember a French curve is very helpful for doing things like that. If not, you can sketch as needed. Remember, you can use lines of symmetry. So I can see here that here's the center of my dial on my circle. One technique is to mark how wide it is. So the iPod dial was about 1.5 wide total. So I can mark 1.5 in each direction. And you can see that making an ellipse there. So one technique would be to mark our bounds here and if we can find the right one that lines up using our center lines. This one here looks pretty close. It just so happens that my template says it's a one and a half inch ellipse. Another technique would be to just note the points and then sketch in the corners like we did on the previous example. Now I'll start adding in curves for the other details. One technique is to do the top curve first and then sketch them down so you can see where the bottom curve becomes tangent. And I can fill in my lines in between. If you needed to, you could use the circle template as such, finding the right ellipse that would mark the circle of that size. We can clean up our drawing as needed with our eraser shield. I don't want to erase my guidelines completely, just make them not quite so dark. Don't expect to be an expert overnight at isometric drawing. It takes many years to get decent at it.
if you want more practice, try sketching your curves by using your ruler to measure out how big the circles are. Now, as needed, we can add our dimensions. So in isometric view, your dimensions are also at the same angles. When drawing dimensions in isometric view, try to make your arrows connect. And here we have our, base, our basic technical drawing of our iPod in isometric view. You could do things like add details on the screen or details to the play menu as you work to get better at your skills. Thanks for watching.